Memorial history was made in July 1944 when an RAF Mosquito, one of the few Allied aircraft easily able to penetrate German airspace, was shot down by a Messerschmitt 262 flown by Lieutenant Alfred Schreiber, to whom fell the distinction of achieving the first ever jet fighter victory. Acclaimed by many in Germany and beyond as the most formidable warplane of the Second World War, the ME-262 was to be the great white hope of the Luftwaffe that was never to be fulfilled. Although the first 262 airframe took to the air powered by a piston engine in 1941, it was only in March of the following year that the modified first prototype, fitted with prop and BMW jet engines, flew. With the rollout of the third prototype, the V3, came the first 262 to be fitted with more powerful alternative Junkers Yumo jet engines. Due to the need to employ a hard runway, the 262 was transferred to Leipheim for testing, and it was there on the 18th of July 1942 that the first 262 to take to the air powered by jet engines alone made its first flight. Framed by the wing of a gigant glider, the V3 moved out on the runway to begin its takeoff run. At the controls was Messerschmitt's veteran test pilot Fritz Wendel. Uncertain as to whether the tail could raise itself off the runway, Wendel gently tapped the brakes, forcing the rear of the fuselage to rise. Within seconds, the 262 was airborne. On landing, the aircraft spewed out a lot of smoke, which appeared more dramatic than in reality it was. Although a number of small problems were discovered, the 262 was held to be generally satisfactory. Over the next few months, the wing was modified to give the 262 its characteristic constant sweepback. Prompted by the enthusiastic reports of one of his pilots, Adolf Gallen flew the fourth prototype himself in March 1943. His reaction was ecstatic like I was being pushed by an angel. In consequence, he recommended that all other fighter projects be cancelled and production concentrated on the FW-190 and the ME-262 alone. Gallen's wishes in this matter could not be accommodated so easily. In November, following a demonstration, Hitler ordered that not only should the aircraft be given the highest priority, but that it should be built not as a fighter, but as a bomber. Goering had assured him it could be equipped to carry bombs. He also demanded it be available to contest the expected Allied landings in Europe. Messerschmitt was unable, however, to surmount the technical difficulties with both airframe and engine in order to get the 262 in production, either as a fighter or as a bomber, in any quantity by June 1944. The latter began to leave the production lines in July and entered service with KG-51, thereafter named Commando Schenk, and first saw action over northwestern France in August 1944. The bomber variant was named Stormbird to distinguish it from the fighter version, which was christened the Swallow. Two 551-pound, or a single 1,102-pound bomb, could be carried on under fuselage racks, whilst it retained the nose armament of four 30mm cannon. Notwithstanding Hitler's own insistence and the politicking from other persons also demanding that the type be produced as a blitz bomber, the principal concern of many in the Luftwaffe was to see the 262 in service as a fighter. First deliveries of the Swallow actually preceded those of the bomber variant, with the 262 test detachment under its first commander, Hauptmann Tierfelder, making its first operational sorties in April 1944. With his death, leadership of the detachment was passed by Gallen to Major Walter Novotny, the ace of the Eastern Front, after whom the unit now became named. It was a 262 from Commando Novotny that was employed in the making of this training film for new pilots converting to the type. This was very necessary because the 262 required a different approach than when handling a piston engine type, and the technical superiority of the jet did not automatically confer itself on the pilot. Although a high-speed aircraft, it accelerated slowly due to the still temperamental nature of the Yumo engines. Throttles had to be opened slowly, otherwise the pilot could find the engine suffering a compressor stall, burnt-out turbines, or total failure. Once in the air, he could not use the plane as just a faster 109 or 190. Dogfighting was not possible in the 262, 
by virtue of its large turning radius, which meant that a Mustang, Thunderbolt, Spitfire or Tempest could turn inside it. Diving attacks from the rear to gain speed would allow 262 formations to easily penetrate an enemy fighter screen and allow them to hit the big US bombers employing their heavy nose armament. Based at ACMA near to the Belgian border, Commando Novotny was too close to Allied air bases to work up the new fighter free from interception. Allied fighters soon discovered that the 262 was at its most vulnerable when landing and taking off and bounced them. So protection flights of ME-109s and FW-190s had to be provided. Gallant was visiting ACMA to talk with Novotny when the young commander and fighter ace was killed. On the 8th of December 1944, with Gallon still at the base, he took off in his 262 to attack US bombers. With his aircraft having been hit, Novotny tried to regain the base, but he was in an air battle with Mustangs, with only one engine working. His 262 plunged out of the skies and dived vertically down to its destruction. As a darling of the propaganda department, he was given a state funeral, dead at the age of 24 with a total score of 258 victories, making him the fifth highest scoring fighter pilot of all time. His command was dissolved to become the new 262 unit JG-7. ME-262s continued to operate through to war's end, and March 1945 was to see their most successful employment. On the 18th, 37 262s engaged 1,221 bombers, escorted by 632 fighters, attacking Berlin. Twelve bombers and two fighters were shot down by the jets, which used the R-4M rocket for the first time. On the last day of March, 262 shot down 14 Allied bombers and two fighters for no loss to themselves. In southern Germany, JG-44, the special 262 unit commanded by Adolf Galland, now sacked as Inspector General of Fighters, also engaged in combat, flying out of Munich Rhine. Although a grand total of 1,200 262s had been accepted by the Luftwaffe by early April, less than 200 had actually been allocated to units. In this extremely rare piece of film, an ME-262A-1A-U3 recce variant is seen just after its return to base from a photographic sortie. This particular aircraft belongs to Nehauf Clarung's Gruppe 6, which was originally designated Einsatz Commando Brauneg and was serving in northern Italy in March 1945. A mere handful of this variant was built, the maximum number in service at any one time being seven, recorded on March the 31st, 1945. A window is incorporated in the pilot's floor so he could see what he was photographing, the nose cannon having been removed to fit a variety of camera options. Some pilots did opt to keep a single 30mm cannon alongside their cameras, 